Hello, welcome from Warsaw. I am here to talk uh, about Polish experiences with open educational resources and developments in Poland. I am first of all very sorry that I cannot join you in person, but I hope this recording will be just as good. My name is Alek Tarkowski. I am the director of a Polish organization called Centrum Cyfrowe, the Digital Center. I'm also one of the public leads of Creative Commons Poland. And finally, I'm also the European policy advisor for International Creative Commons. And my role is to work on open educational policies. In Poland, as maybe you know quite a lot is happening with open education, I would like to tell you what is the history, how we got here, and what were some of the success factors. So, Open Education in Poland firstly was a grassroots initiative, was a bottom-up project and a key moment was the forming of the Coalition for Open Education, Koalicja Otwarte Edukacji in 2008. Jagosław Lipschitz, the head of the Modern Poland Foundation, was one of the um, signers of the Cape Town Declaration, which is a declaration defining some standards for open education, and he came back um, to Poland and wanted to implement it. We started talking together also uh, with librarians and members of Wikipedia Poland. And together these four organizations or groups formed uh, the initial partners of the coalition. The coalition is an informal body. We don't have a legal status. We're not a separate association. We're just a loose group of organizations which started with four and today counts um, over 20 organizations. These are both non-governmental institutions, public institutions. We, for instance, have a national gallery and two public universities, um, and also all types of um, small organizations from the mainly cultural, educational, and also scientific uh, sector. And the goal of the coalition is to support uh, open education in Poland, both through outreach activities, community building, and um, policy work. Uh, the coalition is supported mainly through funding from the Open Society Foundations, also looks for other funding sources, um, and the activities mainly focus on communication about open education. Uh, I think the main goal that the coalition achieved is that it built successfully the sense that there is a body of uh, organizations and people that care about open education and want it introduced in Poland. The coalition, for instance, has a mailing list which I think counts over 400 people who, through this mailing list, can regularly learn about developments in open education. So this is the grassroots part and the coalition has been active by now for over five years with the growing number of partners. Um, but the second step that is just as important is the involvement of public institutions. Um, I believe this is crucial that open education cannot be just a grassroots initiative that is supported just by teachers or educators themselves. Uh, at some point you need to have public projects and you need to have the open education model being introduced into the mainstream of education. And I think this can only be done if you also get the um, uh, involvement of institutions, so a movement from top to the bottom. This started in Poland quite interestingly because the first uh, open educational resources produced by public institutions were made as part of a project called the Polish School, Polska Szkoła, which is a project that supports Polish schools abroad in the Polish diaspora in countries like United States and all over Europe. Maybe there's even a, a Polish school in Romania. And these schools needed new textbooks and through a project called Włącz Polskę, Turn Poland On, um, a service was created where in a modular fashion these uh, textbooks are available. They have the shape, if you know the project Connections, this is quite similar. They create so-called educational atoms or modules which you can connect together to build many different textbooks. But in particular there's also one prescribed set that you can use which is equivalent to a textbook needed by the Polish schools. And this was the first sort of significant project but for schools abroad. But it gave the example that such projects can be made by public institutions. And this became important around 2010 when uh, Poland started thinking about the new project to build computers, to bring computers into schools. Uh, our previous project, which ran more or less between 2004 and 2010, focused mainly on provision of equipment. So-called um, computer classrooms were formed. These are dedicated rooms in a school which are equipped with a large number of computers and classes would come there 
uh, and in principle learn how to use computers, but in practice these classes are often closed behind the lock and not often used. One of the problems is that teachers don't have the necessary skills to use them. So in 2010 the government decided to sort of renew this project, which would also be based on provision of computer equipment, but there was an idea that some elements should be added. And these elements were on one hand a very big educational process for teachers to provide the teachers with skills needed so that they in turn can teach students about how to use computers. But secondly, there was an idea that you need good quality content for these computers that you will distribute. Both programs to run on these computers but also educational content. And through a pretty long policy project, the Creative Commons in Poland, my organization, the broader coalition, and other stakeholders managed to convince the government that the proper approach to do it would be to create open content. The argument being that if you're already spending public funding and if you would like this funding to be available in as many computers that you provide to schools as possible, then this content is at best open. And indeed, ultimately, the, uh, the new Computer for Schools project called the Digital School, Cyfrowa Szkoła, includes a very strong open educational resources component. Most importantly, we will spend around 12 million euro until 2015 to create a basic set of open textbooks. These will be um, available for all school levels from first grade of elementary school to last grade of high school, which is altogether 12 years. And these are basic textbooks that uh, uh, fulfill the norms of the basic curriculum. Additional uh, materials, additional subjects are not covered, but the basic curriculum is covered in full. It is important to note here what is the current textbook production system. Today textbooks are produced by commercial publishers and purchased by parents. They are not purchased by the school system. Parents themselves cover the cost. So this new model in which public funding is introduced to, to provide content that is open is a really big step. We believe that the digital school program has a really high standard of openness. All content will be produced under a Creative Commons attribution, the CC BY license. And additionally, there's a, a standard for technical openness um, and for formats and for availability to people with disabilities. In practice, this means that this is not only Creative Commons license, but made in an HTML5 technology and with the proper um, accessibility standards, the WGAC 2.0 standard. And altogether, this creates a very open set of content, which from the start is being built on a dedicated online platform that will, which is, I think, also important, work very well with mobile technologies. That's one more step. The platform um, uses part of the code of the connections platform and the same model that is being developed by a Polish um, research institution. Um, so these textbooks are being created and additionally uh, there will be some other type of content created, supplementary materials, um, including all types of video, audio video materials, multimedia content, and so on. And this project has sort of established the open education model in Poland and we can now see it's a point of reference. The Ministry of Education is sort of supporting this project developing it further and thinking about introducing openness into new other projects. One part that we are admittedly missing is an open policy, so a policy introduced by law which would state that any type of publicly funded educational content is openly available. This is something we're working on, basically to take the model from the digital school program, a model that's by now pretty well understood, and translate it into a general policy. To end my talk I would like to mention just a bit some, what are some of the success factors, some of the things you can do also in Romania to help uh, open education develop. First of all, I think it's crucial to build ties with other open communities, with people who already have some knowledge of the open issues, even if they're not dealing directly with open education. So these could be librarians who are often very well aware of things like open access, open access advocates in the scientific community, or people like Wikimedians and even individual people who care about openness. These are all people who can support the open educational movement, though ultimately it's crucial to get teachers involved. Um, so the second important thing is to work with teachers and also with parents, with any possible parents' associations. 
The idea of open education is not simple. It's quite easier to explain to something that you're moving from paper to digital textbook than that you're moving to an open textbook. So I think a lot of effort needs to be put in outreach. And here it's very good to give practical examples. There's a small group of people who care about openness as such, but others just want high quality, reusable, safe content. We found out, for instance, in Poland that a lot of teachers are not aware of what's legal and what's not. They are very stressed that they're doing something illegal by providing students with all type of content. If we can convince them that open educational resources are safe to use, this is a very good argument for them. So similarly, as good practical examples, it's good to provide specific content they can use. We have in Poland a very successful web page called Open Resources, which is a simply um, actively kept and updated collection of links that at one place you can find good videos and then other interesting pictures in the third lesson plans. And this proves again to be quite successful, except especially if you connect it with more detailed information um, on what this all means. And finally, I think it's important to work with NGOs. I mentioned that uh, teachers ultimately need to be convinced, but in the short run, it's often educational organizations that are more adapt, more interested in innovative things, and open education is such a thing. Um, the Polish example is still developing. We are seeing new uh, projects move into the open educational model. We finally see that this is not just a question whether it's bottom up or top down, but it's the working from both sides. And all I can say is that I hope that Romania will also develop its open educational model and that soon we'll have an opportunity to build partner projects between our, our two countries. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.